What are you doing here? I can't let you be the only one taking this risk! I hardly see this as a great risk. The people of Liyue Harbor are well prepared, and she is already badly injured. Only sheer willpower is keeping her alive. I may be nearing the end of my stamina, but in a fight to the death, I think I have the upper hand. This place is unstable. It is too risky to continue pursuing her. If the place collapsed, the consequences would be disastrous. Let's head back. I'm just a little exhausted. Otherwise, fine. I wanted to deal with it myself. I didn't expect you to follow me. Don't worry. She's not coming back anytime soon. After an injury like that, she'll likely seek refuge somewhere else. How did things go underwater? It's been dealt with. She was injured before entering the water. It didn't take too much effort to finish the job. Good. So the crisis has been safely averted. When you visit the Jade Chamber in the future, you will be afforded generous treatment. Lady Ningguang, the fleet reports that the sea monster has left Guyan Stone Forest and the surrounding waters have returned to normal. Thank you. How are the Millilith? Thanks to the medical supplies you prepared and Lady Keqing's command, our losses were minimal. Of course, we owe huge thanks to this young lady for her help. On behalf of the entire Millilith, thank you for your service. I... Great. Then next time I watch Miss Yun's opera, I'll be able to take the compliments. I wasn't trying to be a hero, though. I just wanted to protect you. Let the soldiers recuperate, but don't let your guard down. If she returns with a vengeance, we must be prepared. Yes, ma'am. You've been monitoring us for some time now. I trust you've reached a conclusion. Hmm. You wish to hear one's opinion. Well, things would have hardly gone so smoothly had it not been for Shen He. That I do not deny. However, final victory was always going to be ours, even had things been a little more arduous. If it came to it, I could always destroy another Jade Chamber. One has observed your adaptation of the Guizhong Ballista, and find oneself compelled to admit that you have evidenced some degree of novel thinking. You have learned from past failures and prepared for this crisis in advance. This is considerable progress compared to the last time. Hence, on balance, one finds your performance during this trial Satisfactory enough, but there will no doubt be further trials to come in the future. Do not suppose that one will not continue observing you hereafter. While the position of Tianjin remains mine, I will always ensure Liyue's safety. Shen He, one saw you secretly venture out from the mountains a few years ago, and noticed the air of dejection in which you returned. Hopefully, this trip to Liyue Harbor has been a different experience. Yes. I can't explain it, but... I feel happier than I expected. Hmm. Good. Traveler, please take good care of Shen He. She is a dear child. In fact, one has many fond memories of Shen He's childhood that she may be interested to hear about. 
there'll be no need for that. Oh. Hm. They are all like this. Fine. Since you care not to listen, one shan't be telling you. One shall be going homeward now. Please, have a good rest. Come to the Jade Chamber when you have recovered your energy. We must celebrate both the completion of the Jade Chamber and the fact that Liyue has weathered another crisis. This banquet must be the most spectacular ever. Wow! Everyone's already seated! It's Paimon's first time attending a banquet in the Jade Chamber. The food here looks amazing! All of you here are my distinguished guests. I am determined that each of you thoroughly enjoys yourself. Those who don't drink alcohol, please, help yourself to other beverages. Fine wine is a delight to the senses, but it is far from the only one. I trust you will find the marvelous view from the Jade Chamber to be an equally gratifying indulgence. Have you heard? Miss Yun's going to be performing today. Sure have. Honestly, it's the main reason I'm here. I've never missed any of Ms. Yun's performances, and I don't intend to start now. I hear she's going to perform The Divine Damsel of Devastation today, the one written by her father. I've been so excited that I've barely slept the last few nights. Hey, look! Ms. Yun is going on stage! What did you think? Personally, I thought I sang rather well. It was beautiful! Paimon wants to learn too! It was wonderful. Also, thank you. You're welcome. 
Thanks to you, the Divine Damsel of Devastation is a more nuanced tale than ever. The play has an ending, but life goes on. I believe you will find a way to fit in in Liyue Harbor. Thank you. I think I've found the opportunity I needed to change. Ms. Yun! <laughs> Here you are! Great to see you! Huh? Hey, this young lady with the white hair looks like some kind of VIP. Yeah, that's it, like an adeptus. Wait, you're the girl from the opera, aren't you? The divine damsel herself. And look who else we have here, the illustrious traveler. Well, I'll be. This was definitely worth showing up for. Let me pull up a chair, all right. We'll all have a friendly chat. Get better acquainted. <sighs> Alternatively, you could leave us alone. That is, if you'd prefer to finish your drink via the orifice of your own choice. Uh-oh. This feels all too familiar. Shenhe's back to her old self again. Hey, what are you doing? Calm down, Shenhe. Calm down. Hmm, now that I think about it, I'm glad Master sent me here to deliver the sigils. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had the chance to meet you. I'm sure I have much to learn from you in the future. To act, one must first feel. After our trip to Mount Tianhung together, I felt much more in touch with the character today. I believe I was able to deliver a more profound performance because of it. Next time I have a new opera, may we study the character together again. You've made an exceptional contribution toward the building of the new Jade Chamber. I will not forget this. I shall be sure to repay your kindness at an appropriate juncture. Who would have guessed that rebuilding the Jade Chamber would draw out such a massive monster? Oh, for a second there, Paimon really thought the Jade Chamber was gonna be ruined again! Oh, but it's all over now! Who knows if the Lantern Rite can still go on after an incident like that, though? Let's ask Lady Mingguang how things are shaping up for the festival this year. Send this report to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and have them delegate each of the tasks on the list to the appropriate departments. Also, be sure to tell them that though the Lantern Rite may be complicated, everything must be done properly. Hello, Lady Mingguang! It's us again! No, of course not. You are my honored guests. And given the looks of you two, I presume that you're here to celebrate the Lantern Rite? That's right! So what's on the agenda for the festival this year? As always, there will be a variety of activities taking place. Oh, but there is one of particular interest. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is planning a fireworks show this year. It should certainly be worth your time. Releasing Mingxiao Lanterns has always been at the heart of the Lantern Rite. But with all that has occurred in Liyue as of late, I think the people of the city need something to warm their hearts. A feeling of everyone coming together in solidarity. So, I believe that this year calls for a celebration of particular magnificence. Something that would be closer to the hearts of every citizen. We are currently in the process of placing fireworks at various locations all throughout Liyue. We shall choose a timely moment during the festival to set off all the fireworks in unison, allowing the sparkling lights and excitement to resonate with the hearts of the people. Fireworks? But we've already seen fireworks in other places before. <gasps> Is there something special about the fireworks in Liyue? Fireworks were originally developed alongside many other inventions here in Liyue. When our ancestors first created fireworks, they were originally known as firecrackers. Their bright flashes and loud sounds were often used for warding off beasts or as warning signals to other people. In those days, it was difficult for people to contact one another while out farming the land, so they would carry firecrackers with them to give signals when necessary. But people's lifestyles began to change after Leo Harbor was founded. 
They no longer had to travel out of town to tin the fields anymore, so the use of firecrackers for emergencies also began to dwindle. But through our local customs, the pioneering spirit of the firecrackers has been passed down to this very day. We made improvements to firecrackers and began setting them off during the Lantern Rite to commemorate the tenacious spirit of our ancestors. Wow! Everything has so much history in Liyue! As I'm sure you already know, everything on this land accumulates history and value as time passes. That is the nature of Liyue. I've left Kuching in charge of the fireworks show. If you're interested, why don't we pay her a visit together? <sighs> we need to add a few more locations for launching fireworks. The show has to be visible all across Liyue, not just in the city. They celebrate Lantern right in Qingsa Village too, you know. <laughs> but... Lady Kuching... What about our budget? The budget is exactly what it's meant to be. It's the necessary amount of funds to properly carry out a task. If you think the current budget will not suffice, then we'll simply have to apply for more funding from the Ministry of Civil Affairs and wait for their approval. Our aim is to organize a memorable Lantern Rite. The budget is there just to facilitate planning. We mustn't lose sight of our goal. Yes, Lady Kuching. I understand. Good. And please remember, safety first. <sighs> oh, it's Ningguang and the Traveler. Good to see you. Are you here for the Lantern Rite? Your timing couldn't be any better. The preparations are almost complete. I'm reviewing the positioning of the fireworks and double-checking the relevant facilities. It's all in a day's work. Forgive my directness, but if I'm not mistaken, you could just as easily leave these tasks to your subordinates. You've already been working around the clock these past few days. I am sure a break would not be amiss. Uh, no, no, it's fine. Really, I can handle it. Pungi, please redraft our plans, make a summary report, and send it to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I'm going into town to check the progress of the fireworks setup. I'll return shortly. As for you, Traveler, you're our esteemed guest. Please, take the opportunity to stay in Liyue Harbor and enjoy the festivities. Pungi, is everything clear? Please remember the tasks I've given you. Yes, Lady Kuching. Don't worry. Good. Ningguang, Traveler, goodbye for now. Please, excuse me, Lady Ningguang. And, uh... Traveler, I must get going. Lady Kuching told me a great deal of information, and I have to write up the plans from scratch again, so time is of the essence. Oh, one moment. I almost forgot. Here, Traveler. This is a launch tube. Lady Kuching said you may be interested, so she had me keep one to give to you. Someone with good handicraft skills should be able to use this to design their very own fireworks. You should try it when you have the chance. Couldn't get a single word in just now. Uh, well, more like Paimon didn't dare open her mouth while they were talking, but still. Did you notice it too? Lady Kuching is a lot more outspoken than she used to be. And she seems a whole lot busier too. Wonder why? Ever since the Adepti left Liyue Harbor in the hands of mortals, we Qixing have taken up the responsibility of leading the people. We have taken charge of many vital tasks in various sectors, and we are responsible for planning and organizing all sorts of affairs. That said, being in charge of everything inevitably takes its toll. It's exhausting at times. Jiangzhou was responsible for planning the Lantern Rite in former years, but her father is getting quite old now, so she transferred to another department this year. In the end, the Lantern Rite planning was left to Kuching and myself. I am the head organizer, while Kuching is responsible for the highly anticipated fireworks show. Such an important event should be entrusted to the most qualified candidate. Kuching is disciplined, yet passionate about her work. 
So she's naturally the best fit for the job. She's definitely disciplined. No doubt about that. Absolutely. She is strict with both herself and others, to the point that she can even become overly involved at times. She's worked several days without a break now. I'm concerned about the effects it may have in the long run. Finding balance is an essential concept in Liyue culture. I've tried talking to her, but you know how she is. She uses her wit to talk circles around anyone. Traveler, you are quite close to Kuching. Why don't you try talking to her? Maybe she'd listen to someone as experienced as you. Thank you, Traveler. I am glad you are able to help. Kuching can be a tough nut to crack sometimes. I still have other business to attend to at the Jade Chamber. I'll leave Kuching in your capable hands. Uh, are you sure you can really persuade Kuching to take a break? Even Ningguang herself couldn't manage to convince her. Besides, before you can persuade someone, you have to at least understand how they feel at the moment. Kuching has been working non-stop without a break! Uh, duh! Come on, everyone knows that! Think harder! How does she feel deep, deep down inside? Uh... Or... Maybe... <gasps> we can ask a friend! You know, someone more knowledgeable about these things. Huh? Zhang Li? Oh, there's no arguing that. Zhang Li it is then. Hmm, Paimon thinks he's still a consultant at the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Let's go see if he's there. Huh? Hello. How may I help you? Ah, yes. Well, I'm afraid he is currently out with the director. Out with the director? Oh, you mean for work? The director said that they were going for a walk. If you'd prefer, you could go look for them at third round knockout. I've heard the director often goes there to do, a uh, promotion. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh, I am so full. Not another bite. Eh, le, le. Hats off to you, Xiangling. Serving the grilled fish with a dipping sauce is quite an innovative approach. The flavor is just to die for. <laughs> That's my signature dipping sauce. I knew it would taste great. Hmm. Tempered Jueyun chili powder mixed with garlic paste and chopped scallions. Then seasoned with salt, vinegar, and soy sauce, before finally sizzling in hot oil. This recipe may seem a bit crude, but is entirely hinged on the precise balancing of flavors and seasonings by the chef. Everything must be balanced just right. It is the consummate mastery of this balance that turns a humble dish into an exquisite one. Oh, that's quite the compliment, don't you think? <laughs> I'm flattered. Thank you, Mr. Zhongli. And I thought I have a way with words. But you certainly take the prize, Mr. Zhongli. You are too kind, Director. Your eloquence is... <clears throat> infamous in Liu Harbor. Oh, what's that? Oh, would you like to order something, Guoba? Oh, please, by all means, it's my treat. I'll just open a tab under Xiangling. Hey, are you guys talking about tasty food again? Oh, it's the Traveler in Paimon. What brings you to this side of town? Hold on, let me take a wild guess. Hmm, yes. Oh, you must be here for the lantern rites. Uh, isn't that pretty obvious? <laughs> Nobody could have guessed that. Oh yeah, come on. Can't you take a joke? You came at the perfect time. I was just letting everyone try my latest dish. The owner of Third Round Knockout says it's... It, well, a real knockout. 
Mr. Zhongli and Hu Tao seem to like it too, but I think it never hurts to let more people do a taste test. How about it, you two? Would you like to have a taste? Huh. Don't have to ask Paimon twice! Or once, even! Huh? You mean we're not gonna try any? Oh, fine. Let's get down to business. We meet again, Traveler. I trust your journey is going well? Splendid. Therein lies the value of a journey. So come on. Why are you looking for our good consultant? Do enlighten us. And just in case you were wondering, we're on business too. We only tried Xiangling's dish since we just happened to be here. Business? What kind of business would the Wangxiang Funeral Parlor possibly have during a festival? Even during the most joyous of holidays, life still follows its natural course, does it not? Is that really so surprising? <laughs> but there isn't a need to be alarmed. It's just a nice day today, and I thought we could go for a walk while doing a little promotion for our business. Oh, you could go ahead and chat away. Xiangling and I will go have some tea with the boss over there. Oh, Xiongli, please come get me when you're through here. Of course. I'll see you later, Director. Now then, Traveler. What brings you to see me today? Hmm. Yes. The Yuhang is honest, intelligent, and most diligent. She is capable of shouldering responsibilities that few others could. But everything has a balance, and one's health must certainly weigh in. Yeah! Everyone knows you're super knowledgeable! Paimon bets she would listen to someone like you! If I were still the mighty Rex Lapis, I might be able to help her see reason. But alas, I'm now nobody but an ordinary consultant. My words no longer carry the same weight as they once did. Besides, I am by no means close to the Yuhang. Taking the liberty to lecture her may just as easily produce the opposite of the desired effect. Oh, you're right. Uh, then what should we do? We could take a more subtle, indirect approach to the matter. Such as telling a story that resonates with her containing your message conveyed within it. Such a story can be achieved by referencing topics from her daily life. The story could prove even more effective if you weave in something about someone close to her. Um... Paimon doesn't really get it. I knew you'd understand what to do. <laughs> well done, Traveler. Go collect some source materials for your story. Of course, I can always provide you with my advice, if needed. Once we have formulated the plot, you can tell the story to the Yuhang. You are on amiable terms with the Yuhang, which makes you the natural candidate. Oh, Paimon gets it! So we need to talk with people who know cooking, right? Hmm. So who should we start with? Greetings, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm not intruding. Huh? Oh! Lady Kuching! <laughs> Mr. Zhongli, I didn't expect to see you here. Thank you for all your assistance during the Rite of Parting. You are most welcome, Yu Hung. It was the least I could do. Hmm? Why? And what's with your strange expression? Oh, I see. My apologies. I appear to have interrupted your conversation with Mr. Zhongli. Kuching, are you here looking for us? Yes. I was going to ask you to introduce me to the Adepti. I thought that it would be fitting to send them some festive gifts. On behalf of the Liyue Qixing. But didn't you meet them when we were fighting to defend Liyue Harbor together? You could just as easily go and find them in Juyun Karst. Yes, but we only met briefly on that single occasion. The Adepti may have already forgotten about me. And I'm concerned it would be imprudent to show up so suddenly. 
Which is why I thought it would be more appropriate to ask you to introduce me first. So you even have to run around delivering gifts in person? <sighs> Thank you, Traveler. Let me go and prepare the gifts. I'm sorry to make you run errands with me during our big festival. I promise to make this quick and I'll be sure to get you back in time to enjoy the fireworks show. Huh? T together <clears throat> All right. I'll go to see the fireworks with you once I've finished my work. Speaking of which, Mr. Zhongli, the fireworks show will be particularly exciting this year. Please, don't miss it. Ah, yes. Thank you for your kind reminder. I should be going now. Traveler, please come find me at the Jade Chamber once you're ready. And there she goes! <laughs> That's the Yuhang. Efficient and reliable as ever. You're really reliable too, Zhongli! <laughs> Why, thank you, Paimon. Please, don't forget our earlier conversation. Once you've collected enough story material, we can meet here again and discuss things further. Ah, you've arrived. I've made all the necessary preparations and even packed some handmade snacks. Oh, that reminds me. I've also prepared some launch tubes made by Pungyi. I hope the Adepti will like them. Is there anything else I should bring? Good. In that case, let's first pay Madame Ping a visit in the city before heading out to Joyun Karst. The festive season is upon us. This is no time to be running hither and thither. We should relax and enjoy the season. I get it, Granny, but you know, having lots of clients is a good thing. <laughs> I'm sure it is, but really, child? Who could be seeking your help during the Lantern Rite? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Madam Ping! Happy Lantern Rite! It's a pleasure to see you again, Madam Ping. How are you? Oh dear, well, look who's here. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you all in time for the festival. Hello, Traveler. Long time no see. Oh, and Lady Kuching is here, too. The Qixing have prepared some small gifts for you to celebrate this festive occasion. There are some seasonal goods, two bolts of fine silk, and some exotic flower seeds which I pick specifically for you, Madam Ping. I brought all the lighter gifts with me, but the silks are still on the way. I just submitted them for delivery, so I'm sure they'll arrive in good time. Please, accept our humble gifts. I hope you'll find them to your liking. Wow, those gifts sound marvelous. Please be sure to thank the Chising on our behalf. Yes, how very nice of you. I'm sure the flowers will be most beautiful if you personally selected the seeds. Thank you very much, Kuching. Please, enjoy them. We intend to visit the other Adepti as well, so I'm afraid we must be going now. I presume you mean Cloud Retainer and the others? Yes, they should be over in Zhueyun Karst. By the way, I've heard that you designed all the street decorations yourself, Kuching. You decorated the city so beautifully, yet you don't even have the time to go and see it for yourself. What a pity. Yenfei really enjoys spending time at the festival. You'll find her wandering around there whenever she can spare a moment. Come on, Granny. I wasn't wandering around. I was providing essential consultation to my clients. Oh, is that so? Were you also holding consultations with clients while you stood in front of the grilled tiger fish stand for all that time? As a matter of fact, I was helping them calculate the prices. It's not easy, you know. I had to check a lot of different items. That's right. There are no holidays in my line of work. I have to be ready whenever my clients need me. That sounds exhausting. Oh, Paimon can't imagine a life without holidays. Well, though there are
are no set holidays. I do get to decide on my own schedule. I can always budget some time to relax. Otherwise, I would always look exhausted in front of potential clients. It'd be hard to land new cases after leaving a terrible first impression. Besides, what's the saying? Ah, yes. A rested worker is an efficient worker. I was there many times when I was supervising the festival construction, but I haven't been there since. I was planning to go after I finished my work, but the work keeps piling up. I ended up completely forgetting about it. <laughs> yes, I should take the opportunity to show you around while you're here. But first, we should head to Joy Yoon Karst. If you'll excuse us, Madam Ping. We'll be leaving now. Let's see... Which Adeptus shall we visit first? Hmm... Oh! Why don't we visit Cloud Retainer at Mount Outsong first? She usually stays inside her abode, so she'll be super easy to find. Alright. Cloud Retainer it is. I know that you must be busy, but please take care of yourself. Sacrificing your health is never wise. Lady Kuching is so hardworking. Maybe I should take a leaf out of her book. The festive season is fast approaching. What brings you to one's abode? Has the Ministry of Civil Affairs simply run out of work for you to do? Well, with Lantern Rite just around the corner, I decided it was a good time to take leave and pay you a visit. But, um, where are Mooncarver and Mountain Shaper? Them? Oh, don't even get one started. Oh, is that not the Traveler and the Yu Hung too? Hmm, a rare visitor indeed. Greetings, venerable Adeptus. And greetings, Ganyu. Huh? Lady Kuching, I didn't expect to see you here. The Yu Hung of the Chi Sing. Here. Most fascinating. Hmm. Most courteous of you to travel hither and pay your respects. What is the- It's the festive season, and on behalf of the Chi Sing, I'd like to give you our regards. Please. Accept our humble gifts. As the governing body of Liyue, the Chi Sing must be busy with a myriad of affairs. And yet, you still take the time to visit one in this mountain abode. Eminently considerate of you. Oh, what an amusing cylindrical device. I wonder what that could be. This is a new type of firework which has been modified by the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I've heard that you are fond of gadgets, so I've brought one for your amusement. Cloud Retainer... Although she is not outwardly opposed to us, she is still skeptical of Liyue being ruled by humans. Maybe she thinks humans are still too young to handle it. Hmm. No matter. With time, our strength will become apparent enough. Before then, we should try to give her a good impression. <laughs> Good thing I came prepared. Cloud Retainer has a great interest in gadgets, so she will certainly appreciate this gift. Ganyu has said that Cloud Retainer is very picky about food, so I made sure not to bring any snacks to avoid upsetting her. I've given everything thorough consideration. It should all go well. Goodness me. Who ever would have thought? Oh. My, how very interesting. It is intricate with ingenious design and is aesthetically agreeable. Yes, judging from Cloud Retainer's expression, it seems this gift was a success. Very good. One shall gladly accept this device. One surmises from Ganyu's words that you also wish to see Moon Carver and Mountain Shaper. Pity. Your timing is most unfortunate. Oh! Are they not home? Oh, we wanted to see them too! Hmm. Those two old fossils. 
Mooncarver has been most anxious to see how Liyue Harbor fares, but the agreement was clear. Liyue is now in the hands of the Chi-Sing, and he cannot simply roam into the city and begin supervising others' work as he pleases. So one tried to persuade him otherwise, proposing that if he could not be placated, he could go to the city disguised as a human and take a brief look around. Alas, he is too stubborn, too proud. He would have none of it. Thereafter he left, claiming to have gone traveling. He has not returned since. Mountain Shaper, however, is more open-minded. But he said he wished to look for something new with which to defend the tranquility of his mountain. He told one that he was leaving in search of treasures, and one has not heard from him since. Wait. Huh? What's everybody doing here? This voice... Is it Shenhe? Oh? Oh? So Shenhe's here too! Is she also here to visit Cloud Retainer? Is she the one that you mentioned before? Hello, everyone. Shenhe, this is Ganyu. You have most likely heard of her. Uh, oh, uh, hello. I'm Ganyu. I work at Yujing Terrace. I've heard that you returned to Liyua Harbor recently, so if you need anything, please feel free to come to me. I will. Thank you. I brought some food from the city. I heard that during Lantern Rite, people in Liyue bring food to share with their friends. So here I am. Oh no, I made a point of not bringing any food offerings. Is it going to be okay? Oh, and you even brought food for those two old fossils. That's right. Hmm. <clears throat> After barely a few days in the city, you have learned so much. Thank you for these delectable edibles, Shenhe. <sighs> huh? Everyone, you shall all be staying in Liyue Harbor in the future. One should like to think that you will all look out for each other. Is that understood? Will do. Yes, understood. This place is much livelier than I'd imagined. The Conqueror of Demons? One has not seen him of late. Well, then he's probably not enjoying Karst. Hmm. Let's go look for him in his usual spot, at Wang Shuen. In short, one is the only Adeptus who has elected to remain in Joyun Karst for the festival. Had Ganyu not come to visit, one would likely have stayed firmly put in one's abode to resume research of gadgets and mechanics. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please accept my profuse apologies. <laughs> Why the sudden solemnity? It would certainly not be the first time one has been interrupted on your account. As a youngling, you did so love to scurry around the place while one's attention was monopolized by mechanisms. You were especially drawn to a certain implement one had made. Oh, what was it? Oh? Oh no, here she goes again. This could spell trouble for Ganyu. Huh? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Cloud Retainer. I just remembered there's something I must attend to. I should be going. Oh? Why the sudden haste? With the Yuhang present, why not settle this matter here and now? Uh, n no It's something very important. In fact, I must see Lady Ningguang about it immediately. A matter so pressing that you must find Ningguang in person? <clears throat> uh, yes. Ningguang and I have different scopes of work, you see, and Ganyu has to report to both of us, respectively. It's indeed not easy for her. Lady Kuching is trying to help me. 
Yes, that's right. I'm very sorry, everyone. I will take my leave. Huh. Gone already. That child, she has always been easily ruffled. One can sympathize, however. It is no simple thing to be a secretary. Nearly every matter in Liyue Harbor, momentous or trivial, passes through Ganyu's diligent hands. But even as an adeptus, she must never neglect her own health, lest she fall prone to exhaustion. Ganyu is an assiduous worker, apt to foregoing food and rest once she is busy. Please make sure she eats and sleeps properly whenever you see her. I will. Ganyu has always been a great asset to us. Her health is a priority, so I will take good care of her. The Yu Hung, reliable as ever. <laughs> it was indeed a wise decision to leave Liyue Harbor to you. We will certainly strive to live up to your expectations. As for these edibles, hmm, they do look delectable indeed. You may leave them here. Shanha shall bring these into one's abode, and one shall pass them on to Moon Carver and Mountain Shaper once they have made their return. This firework has an intriguing design. One must conduct a thorough study of it, and one also wants to hear what Shanha has learned in Liyue Harbor. Yes. I have many interesting stories to tell. Let us chat while one scrutinizes this device. Yeah! Don't you rest during the holidays? This is a festive season after all. <laughs> one has long been living secluded in the mountains and no longer observes the holidays. Worry not, one shall take appropriate care of oneself. Rest is crucial. If one is too devoted to one's research and falls ill, one shall be in no fit state to test the devices personally. Is it really that important to test it yourself? Of course. As one sows, so do they reap. And the joy of reaping is what one yearns for. If one spends all that time working on a machine, yet forgets to test the outcome. Hm. That would be akin to a chef who never tries his own food, no? It is unwise to put the cart before the horse. Ah, <sighs> enough idle chatter, everyone. One must go and continue one's research. Come, Shenhe, this way. A chef who doesn't get to try their own food? Hmm... That would be kinda weird. Cloud Retainer sure does know a lot about gadgets and cooking. Though... She can be a bit strange sometimes. But then again, she is an Adeptus. That's the wisdom of an Adeptus. She takes good care of those around her. Though she lives in seclusion, she also manages to bring everyone together. A hermit who's more social than most living in society. <laughs> what an interesting character. Traveler, Paimon, let's head to Wang Xuin. Perhaps we'll find the Conqueror of Demons there. Let's ask Virgil Det where the Conqueror of Demons may be. Huh? Hold on! Isn't that... Chi-Chi! Oh! And the weird guy with the snake around his neck! Dr. Baiju, here are the herbs. I've picked lots of them. Splendid! Let me pack up and then we can be on our way. Hey, you guys! What are you doing? Dr. Baiju wanted herbs. So I came to collect herbs. Lots of them. And Dr. Baiju came too. Traveler! Paimon! Oh, and Lady Kaching! 
It's a pleasure to see you all. We're here stocking up more herbs. Boo Boo Pharmacy always runs out of digestive herbs during the festival seasons. With Lantern right just around the corner, I thought we should get prepared. We came all this way to collect some herbs, and we've picked quite the assortment. We'll be on our way back to the pharmacy once the herbs are sorted. I certainly didn't expect to see the Yuhong all the way out here. I have some business to attend to here. Ah, I see. It's nearly time to celebrate Lantern Rite, and you're still running errands. Hardworking as always. I appreciate the sentiment, Dr. Baiju. I'm just doing my job. Kuching and the Traveler are very busy. And we are busy too. Everyone, keep it up. Right, thank you, TT. We shouldn't tarry here any longer. Take care, you two. Uh, um, three. Traveler, let's go find Virgoldet. Ah, Lady Kuching. What a surprise. Is there anything I can help you with? No, thank you. I'm just wondering if you might know where the Conqueror of Demons is. Oh, we never inquire about Zhao's whereabouts. But if he's here, he would be up on the rooftop terrace. Please feel free to go up and have a look. Hmm. He doesn't seem to be here. Perhaps we came at the wrong time. Maybe he's out battling somewhere again. Let's leave the gifts with the owner and ask her to... How can I help? Yes. Hello. I am Kuching, Yuhong of the Liyue Qixing. The Yuhong. Yes. I saw you when we battled Osile. You are fierce with your blade. Uh, anyway, we're here to give you some lantern right presents. See? There's lots of tasty food! Hmph. <laughs> Don't waste your delicacies on me. Ugh. <sighs> Eradicating demons is my duty. You don't have to thank me. Karma is harmful to the human body. Even if you have a stronger constitution than most. You should keep your distance from me when you can afford to. Hey, wait! Are you leaving? Aw, oh, come on! Lantern Rite is almost here! Don't you want to take a break? Like I said before, I have no liking for crowds. I must remain vigilant of evil attacks, especially during the holidays. I will continue my patrol as usual. You should also exercise caution. And if there's any danger... Good. And he's gone! Well, Xiao hasn't changed a bit. Wonder if he'll come and watch the fireworks this year, though. All right. We've completed our visits with all the Adepti. Let's take a break downstairs before we head back into the city. Oh no. What should we do? Huh? Oh! Lady Kuching! Lady Kuching! I'm so glad to see you here. Uh, Feng Yi? What's wrong? What are you doing here? Lady Kuching, let me explain. I had rearranged the fireworks layout and expanded the range to Qingsa Village just like you requested. My people finished setting up the fireworks and we left someone in charge to launch them for the show. But... <sighs> the person we left in charge came back shortly after and reported that all the fireworks in Qingsa Village had been stolen. I immediately reported the situation to the Millileth, and had another batch of fireworks made to be transported to Jinxa Village under escort. However, everyone's short-handed during Lantern Rite. The Millilith are already stretched thin and don't even have enough people to fill their regular patrols. 
They can't spare anyone to look after the fireworks for us. We don't have many materials left, so if the second batch of fireworks gets stolen as well, we're done for. So, I was thinking to go to Chinksa Village and have a look first. Which is when I bumped into you. Lady Kuching, what should we do? According to the Ministry of Civil Affairs, the number of guards on patrol has to be doubled and rotated continuously during Lantern Rite. They must perform these extra measures in addition to their standard daily affairs. The only manpower they can muster during the festival would be the emergency response units. But those special units are intended only for backup. There are not many of them and they cannot perform prolonged guard duty. If we wish to make use of them, we'll need to resolve the problem quickly. Maybe we can ask the Adepti for help. This would be a piece of cake for someone like Cloud Retainer or Xiao. <sighs> no, that would only make us look incompetent. I'll handle this, Pungyi. That's right! We can take care of this, together! Thanks, you two. Actually, I have an idea. Let me make some arrangements. Pungyi? Go back to Liyue Harbor and get the fireworks ready. Then meet me in Chingsa Village. Traveler, come with me. Let's ask around to see what happened. Oh, how could a whole batch of fireworks just vanish like that? Hello, Granny Roshin. We'd like to know more about the recent fireworks theft. Oh, Lady Keqing. I can hardly believe you came personally to investigate. It's no trouble at all. Please, tell us what happened. Well, when they brought the fireworks, the children in the village were very excited. They were all gathered round, watching the area for a long time. The workers piled up the fireworks and said they would go confirm the locations to set them off. That's when they left the village. Oh, now, let me remember. Ah, oh, yes. I recall that they left the fireworks in an open area just next to a house down the old road. But the very next day, all the fireworks were nowhere to be seen. The person in charge of the fireworks was so anxious that they went straight back to the city to find a solution. Oh, the villagers here are worried too. The fireworks missing can only mean that there are thieves about. There are elderly and kids in the village, you know? Although the Milliveth are stationed here, no one dares to go out anymore. I understand. Please help reassure the people in the village and tell them everything's going to be fine with the Milliveth standing guard. Traveler, let's go investigate the place where the fireworks were stolen.